Buenos días, hermanos, paz de Cristo. En esta mañana estamos celebrando la misericordia de Dios y también estamos celebrando a todos los padres de la iglesia de Sion. En este día les deseamos las más hermosas congratulaciones y que tengan un hermoso día y sabemos que todos ustedes son buenos padres porque le están sirviendo a Dios. Enseguida vamos a escuchar un, 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 uh, un canto con nuestra hermana Janelle Maffei. Y quiero titular eh, este corto mensaje, varones forzados, leyendo en 1 Corintios 16, 13, que dice, velad estar firmes en la fe, portados varonilmente y esforzados. Hermano, Dios en su uh, inmensa sabiduría puso al hombre como la cabeza de la mujer y líder de su hogar. Entonces se debe es el de deber del hombre proteger a su esposa y a sus hijos. Nehemías, al reconstruir el muro de Jerusalén, ordenó a los varones que se defendieran de sus enemigos. Y les dijo, Nehemías, no temáis delante de ellos. Acordaos del Señor grande y temible y pelead por nuestros hermanos, por nuestros hijos, por nuestras hijas y por vuestras mujeres y vuestras casas. Hermanos, Dios exige que el varón como cabeza tome el lugar apropiado y se mantenga firme, fuerte, valiente y esforzado en el servicio de Dios. Todos los términos del verso que hemos leído, hermanos, son de índole militar. En primer lugar tenemos a la palabra verdad que significa estar a la, a la mira del peligro, estar alerta. Nosotros los padres de familias tenemos que estar al cuidado de nuestros hijos para protegerlos del peligro. Tenemos que velar eh, hermanos en contra de la maldad, tenemos que enseñar a nuestros hijos el peligro de la maldad y el pecado. 
Por eso Salmos 34, 11 y 14 dice, venid, hijos, oídme, el temor de Jehová os enseñaré. Aleluya, gloria a Dios, apártate del mal y haz el bien, busca la paz y síguela. La otra palabra que en esta mañana estamos estudiando es, que dice o la frase, estar firmes en la fe. La firmeza significa que no se mueve, que no vacila, que está constante, alguien que está ¿verdad? En, en su entero, definitivo. Esta era una de las características más sobresalientes de los grandes siervos de Dios en la antigüedad. Y, por ejemplo, Josué, que fue un hombre, un gran hombre de Dios, al entregar su ministerio, Desafía a Israel para que ellos le sirvan a Dios. Y le dice, escogeos hoy a quien sirváis, si a los dioses a quienes sirvieron vuestros padres, pero yo y mi casa serviremos a Jehová. ¿Verdad? Aquí miramos a, a Josué, hermanos, que no, era, no fue inconstante, inseguro, mudable, variable, cambiable o inestable. No, al contrario, hermanos, él había de hecho la decisión de servir a Dios con todo, con toda su casa. Cada padre de familia debe de poseer esta cualidad. La firmeza es como el fundamento de cualquier edificio. Si hay firmeza del padre en el servicio de Dios, entonces su empresa como padre será como, será como la casa es edificada sobre la roca. Pero si no hay firmeza en él, entonces su ministerio como padre será como la casa edificada sobre la arena. Por eso Jesús dijo, el hombre prudente es el que edifica su casa sobre la piedra y cuando desciende la lluvia, vienen ríos y soplan vientos. La casa no caerá porque está fundada sobre la roca. Pero el hombre insensato que edifica, edifica su casa sobre la arena cuando desciende la lluvia, vienen los ríos y soplan los vientos, la casa se arruinará y será grande su destrucción. Es importante que todos los padres hagan un compromiso con Dios y digan, Señor, yo primeramente, antes de todo, te serviré, tú serás la prioridad de mi vida. ¿Sabía usted, hermano padre, que ese es el mejor regalo que usted le puede dar a sus hijos? Desde que usted le sirva a Dios. Y por eso el maestro dijo, buscar primeramente el reino de Dios y justicia y todo os será añadido. Y la siguiente frase dice, por, por, portaos varonilmente. El significado, el significado de esto es que el hombre sea valiente, audaz, intrépido, no, que no sea cobarde ni tímido, ¿verdad? Entonces, esto es importante que nosotros los padres de familia seamos padres, hermanos audaces e intrépidos. Y una de las cosas que miramos en la Biblia de que cuando David va a morir, él le ordena a Salomón, su hijo, que está muy joven y tierno, y le dice, yo sigo el camino de todos en la tierra, esfuérzate. Y sé hombre. En estas palabras Salomón. ¿Verdad? En otras palabras Salomón. Tú serás el rey de Israel. Y como rey tendrás que ser muy valiente, fuerte y robusto. Tú tomarás la rienda de este pueblo numeroso. Y tendrás que tomar el toro por los cuernos. Israel. Te estarás observando y mirando para ver si eres valiente o esforzado. Conclusión. Nuestros hijos deben de saber que les amamos. Ellos deben de darse cuenta que sus intereses son importantes para nosotros. Pregúntese usted, ¿qué es, lo que, ¿qué es lo importante para mi hija? Pregúntese, padre, ¿qué es importante para mi hijo? Utilice palabras de afirmación, elogio, admiración, positivas palabras con las cuales usted está definiendo la inteligencia el talento y los rasgos peculiares de su hijo. 
Quiero decir, hermanos, que ah, yo tengo un buen padre, mi padre, el hermano Leobardo Mafei, Macías, eh, nos dejó un patrón muy excelente a todos los Mafei, a toda la familia Mafei. Yo miré a mi, pa, a mi padre, hermanos, un ejemplo sublime de cómo servirle a Dios. Y así como él fue conmigo, yo he tratado de hacerlo con mis hijos, de, de darles a entender que lo más supremo, lo más hermoso en esta tierra es servirle a Dios. Y estoy mirando, hermanos, eh, con alegría, con gozo de cómo mis hijos también están instruyendo a sus hijos en el temor de Dios, en la doctrina apostólica, ¿verdad? en la verdad bíblica. Esto es importante. Hermanos, porque si nosotros podemos lograr que nuestros hijos le sirven a Dios, entonces todo les saldrá bien, porque entonces se cumple la palabra de Dios que dice que el, que el, el hijo que es bienaventurado, ¿verdad?, todo le saldrá bien, le saldrá bien en su vida, le saldrá bien en su trabajo, le saldrá bien con la esposa, el esposo que, es, que escojan, le saldrá bien con sus hijos, ¿por qué? Porque la mano de Dios será con ellos y es lo que nosotros necesitamos hacer, instruir a nuestros hijos en la verdad, en el temor de Dios. Ahora los voy a invitar a que cierren sus ojos y vamos a orar por los padres en esta mañana. Señor Padre Santísimo Jehová de los ejércitos, mi alma te alaba en este día, yo te doy gracias Señor, por cada uno de los padres de esta hermosa congregación, Sion, yo te pido que tú nos bendigas a cada uno, uno de ellos, que le des la sabiduría, el temor de Dios, la paciencia, la prudencia, Señor, para poder criar a sus hijos, aleluya, en el temor de Dios, apartados del mal, que ellos se tomen el tiempo para enseñarles de que no, hay algo, que no hay algo mejor sino servirte a ti, porque tú eres un Dios de bondad, un, un Dios de amor, de misericordia, Señor, que lo que tú quieres para nosotros es lo mejor, es lo mejor para nuestras vidas, que nuestros hogares, que nuestros hogares, Señor, habite la paz, la tranquilidad, el amor fraternal, el gozo, la alegría y que de esa manera también podamos ser unas luz, unas lámparas para este mundo que nos rodea, nos rodea y que las familias de afuera se den cuenta que en nosotros permanece y habita el Dios de verdad. También te, te, te pedimos, Señor, que bendigas a la familia Vargas que está pasando por este golpe, Señor, aleluya, esta separación del hermano Vargas. Dales el consuelo, la paciencia y la serenidad. También te presentamos al hermano ministro Daniel Rodríguez que está en el hospital, que tú lo hagas libre, que lo hagas sano. A nuestro hermano Baltasar también sánalo Señor completamente y bendice a toda la iglesia en general. En el nombre de Cristo Jesús. Amén. Hello everyone, good morning, happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. And those of you that are aspiring to be fathers, don't rush into marriage and being a father too soon. Enjoy your, enjoy your time and enjoy your youth. But it is a wonderful thing to be a father, and I'm so thankful to the Lord for this privilege. We're going to go ahead and get into the Word. We're going to turn our Bibles to the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. Go ahead and open your Bibles. I can kind of see you guys doing it right now. Oh, don't go too far. You just passed it. Go back a chapter. There you go. Ephesians chapter 6, chapter, verse 1 through 3, and it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you, and that you may enjoy a long life on the earth. We're going to speak today about how honor goes a long way. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for this day. And for this wonderful short word that you've given us, we ask that it might make a difference in our lives and the lives of our families and the lives, Lord God, of everyone, my Father, Lord, that is listening to this message. And may we be, be together very soon. Just so I pray. Amen. All right.
So, we're going to talk today about honoring our parents, honoring our father and our mother, not just on earth, but also our father in heaven. And in this portion, uh, the Apostle Paul was, was, was laying out the foundation for the blessing of having uh, a biblical or a, a, a home founded on the truth. And he's writing this because it is the right way to go. Without order in the home, there will not be order in our society. There will not be order in our churches. There will not be order in the world. Children must learn order and respect at home. And everyone that grew up in church, I'm sure that you understand what I'm talking about. We knew who was a boss and we knew who we had to listen to. And in the Word of God, we're supposed to do this not only outwardly, but also inwardly. We're supposed to honor our mother and our father in all that we do. And it's interesting that when a, a child dishonors their parents, when a child goes against their mother or father, the Apostle Paul actually calls it one of the most greatest, one of the worst signs of wickedness. When a, a child, he says in the book of, of at least Second Timothy, when a child strays from honoring their mother or father, that is listed as one of the worst acts someone can do. And I wanted to share with you a little bit about a story we hear routinely about from the Bible, which involves Jacob and Esau. Don't worry, everything is okay. That is not a fire alarm. It's just a beautiful little chime that we're enjoying. And that's a beautiful chime outside in the summer breeze. Can't you feel that breeze? It's so nice. All right, so we're going to take a look at a story from the book of Genesis. And it's a story that involves uh, the, the patriarchal family, it's from the lineage of Abraham, and it's a story that we've heard about a lot regarding Jacob and Esau. Now, Jacob and Esau, we hear about them all the time, and it's about the birthright, right? We know that, that when they were born, it was, it was prophesied that the two would be going against each other all the time, and that Jacob actually meant supplanter when he was, um, when he, when Rebekah gave birth to Jacob and Esau, that that Esau came out first, but Jacob's heel, or Jacob's, Jacob's hand, was on the heel of Esau. And we've read that Esau cemented his infamous legacy as a foolish man when he sold his birthright to his brother for a plate of lentils. And you, you think to yourself, man, why would a person do that? Well, I want to highlight something, that that one act isn't just something that happened overnight. That act, although it had deep spiritual implications, and although it's something that, that would change the course of the brother's futures, it wasn't something, it wasn't just a one-time act that made Esau who he was. And I remember reading the Word of God where it actually states very clearly that, that God hid Esau. That bothered me a lot. And I used to think, why would God hate Esau? Well, I think it, it goes much deeper than the surface of that verse, but but we can see here that, and what I'm about to talk about, we can see that Esau's wickedness wasn't just a one-time, wasn't from a, 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 the action of, of, of or, or the one-time action or one-time occurrence. But one brother did appreciate the blessings of God, and the other didn't. But way before, um, way before Esau sold his birthright, the Bible showed that there were signs of Esau's wayward heart and his spiritual condition. We can see that Esau was a little bit hardened. He might have been a man that didn't get along with both his parents, didn't maybe, wasn't as close to both parents. And the Bible says that if you look at chapter 24, Abraham had established how important it was for his, child, his children or his child to marry a good woman. He saw how other people lived and it troubled him. The Bible says that he gave his most trusted servant the job to return to his hometown and find a wife among his relatives for his son Isaac. So he did that. And God supplied a wife in Rebekah for Isaac. Now we fast forward to Isaac and Rebekah as parents. And we see that they also desired to raise their, ch their, their children, their sons, correctly in the faith of Abraham. Despite this, Esau wanted to do things his own way. And I think that that's where we can usually find ourselves too, right? If we're, if we're 
honest, our flesh wants to do things its own way. Our parents when we're younger will tell us something to do, something we need to do, we don't want to do it because we think there's a better way, there's a newer way, there's a cooler way. And there's a constant battle when you're at a certain age. But the Word of God says that we must follow the, 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 uh, we must follow the orders and honor our parents from our hearts and do so with all of our strength. The Bible says that, that Esau stopped caring about what his parents wanted for him at some point. He stopped listening to what his parents wanted. And he felt like what he saw before him in the wives of, of these, these pagan believers, or the, the women of these, these uh, pagan households, he saw what he liked from his physical standpoint, and he threw away the spiritual implications. The Bible says that he probably knew what his parents wanted for him, and they probably had told him for years what type of woman he should marry, but he didn't care. And the Bible says this in Genesis chapter 26, verse 34 and 35, when Esau was 40 years old, he married Judith, daughter of Beeri, the Hittite, and also Basemath, daughter of Elon the Hittite, and they were a source of grief to Isaac and Rebekah. When a parent sees their child stray from their wishes, it hurts them in a deep way. It says in verse 35 that these women were a, con a consistent and a constant source of stress and sadness for Isaac and Rebekah. They were constantly reminded of how their son dishonored them. And this is similar to what happens in the heart of God. When we stop honoring God, when we go away from His Word, when we go away from His truth, we put a strain on our fellowship with Him. When a believer knows the truth and they go away from the truth, the Holy Spirit cannot have communion with us in the same way at all. And that's why it's so important that you and I honor our Heavenly Father and honor our earthly parents because when we don't, it is a source of friction. And when there's friction, there's stress. And when there's stress, there can be anxiety and sadness. And that's why when we honor God, when we honor our parents, we open ourselves up to the source of joy, which is Jesus Christ, and the fellowship with Jesus Christ. Our decisions should reflect how much we trust our earthly fathers and our heavenly father. There is a wonderful blessing when we honor our fathers, both earthly again and heavenly. In fact, if our fathers are in the family of Christ, it is difficult to honor one and not the other. Amen? When you honor your heavenly father, you honor your parents, your, your earthly father and mother, and vice versa. When you honor one, you will honor the other. And there are multiple blessings at stake for a believer when they decide to do the right thing. If we love the Lord our God and serve Him, we bless the hearts of both of our fathers. There's nothing greater than having a relationship with your Heavenly Father and having a healthy relationship with your earthly father. Amen? Amen. Until a person becomes a parent, it is difficult to understand how much love a father has for his child. Unless a young lady had a child of her own, she won't exactly know what it's like mm -hmm. to care for someone that came from their line. The Bible makes it so clear that a child can either bring honor or shame to their parents' lives. Rebecca speaks of her heartbreak after Esau's terrible decision of marrying wicked woman when in Genesis 27, 46, it says this, Then Rebekah said to Isaac, I am disgusted with living because of these Hittite women, the woman that Esau had married. If Jacob takes a wife from among the women of this land, from among Hittite women like these, my life will not be worth living. What a picture it is that she was so anxious about her son Jacob's decision of whom he would marry, that she decided that if, if he made the same mistake, that she did not even want to live anymore. And I think that shows us that when we do the right thing, there is such a level of joy that we bring our parents that we cannot even understand it. But we've also seen it go the other way when a young person decides to go away from the direction and the wisdom of their parents 
how much shame and hurt it can bring them. And this time of year, we just got through Mother's Day, and we just got, we are now on to Father's Day, and it's a wonderful time, especially if you have your father around. And it's so interesting that we want to please our parents with gifts a few times a year. We want to buy them something nice that they'll enjoy, something that'll make them smile, something that'll bring a little bit of gladness to their hearts. And I don't know where it is, but it's always easier to shop for your, your dad than it is for your mom. I don't know why. I always want to surprise my mom, but I'm not sure if it's going to be the right size, the right color, or maybe she has something like it already. But for dads, dads are usually pretty simple, right? And it's the same way they shop. When a, a man goes inside a store, unless it's me, I like looking for the best deals. But when a guy goes inside a store, they know exactly what they want. They know, go exactly to the department they want to go to, they buy what they plan to buy, and they are out of there. Well, when women go inside a store, they want to see all the options, right? They want to see every color, every size, every season, every length, right? And so it's a little different. And so when you get, so, when you get the right gift for your parents, it makes you a little happy because you're like, wow, I did something good for them. And I think every child wants to give their parents gifts. My son this morning, Jeremiah, didn't have much money left because he spent all his money on shoes and Legos. So he went and found me a, a, a quarter with the year 2007 on it, actually the year 2006 on it, and because he figured by doing the math, that was a year that me and my wife were engaged. And he goes, here you go, Dad. This is something that's important to you. And I said, why? And he goes, look at the year. And he explained to me. So he's a very thoughtful young man. He got me a gift. It didn't cost him much, but I guess it was significant, right? So our kids... And, and us included, we want to do things that honor our parents. But besides the gifts, the best thing that we can do to make them happy and to make them glad is to honor their word and their testimony. Right. How beautiful it is when a child takes the word of their father seriously. How wonderful it is when a child does everything they can to honor their parents and to honor God. Young person, mature person, whoever is listening, let's take some time to honor our Heavenly Father and honor our earthly parents as well, our earthly father and mother. Maybe you don't have your, heavenly, your earthly father anymore. Maybe he's already gone to go with the Lord. You can still honor him by the way that you live. Maybe you're a single mother at home and you're raising your kids on your own. You have both roles and you have so much more responsibility on your shoulders. But I know that God will bless you as the head of the household and He will supply you with the strength that you need. And if you do everything the right way, I know that the Lord will bless you with children that will honor you as the leader of the household. God's Word is true. And when we honor our earthly fathers and mother, it goes well with us in the land, on the earth. God honored, honored and blessed Isaac wonderfully. God blessed him in such a beautiful way. And we serve the same God and we have even more promises through Christ than even they did. Because to them it was not revealed the complete plan of Christ and the plan of salvation. But you and I have, not only in the Old Testament, we have the New Testament, we have the full, the full of helping, the full portion of the Holy Spirit that resides in us. And I'm a witness that when we do what we can, I've made my mistakes and I've done things that aren't always ideal, but when we do what we can to honor our parents, God will bless us. And God has blessed me tremendously with a wonderful wife and beautiful children that cause me a lot of stress, but also a lot of joy and a lot of laughter. And there's not much more I can ask for or complain about. So I have a witness that Christ is good, that the yeah. Lord is good, and that when we honor our parents, when we honor them this day and every day, our, our Heavenly Father and our Earthly Father, that it will go well with us. So I invite you today, church, I invite you friends, I invite your family, to take a moment to think how we are honoring our Heavenly Father through our actions, through our deeds, through our prayer life, through our, our study of the Word, and how are we honoring our earthly parents? Are we doing the things that we should to honor them? Or was it just lip service? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're always before you. And we thank you for your word. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love as our Heavenly Father.
Lord God, we know that there are challenges in our lives that are difficult, Lord Jesus, to sort out. There are problems, Lord, that seem like they're heavy, seem like, the Lord, they are too much for us. But I ask you, Lord Jesus, that you give us the strength, that you give us, my God, the fortitude, that you give us, my God, the inspiration, my Father, to find a way to honor you with all of life's biggest choices. And that we, Lord Father, would honor our heavenly fa our earthly father and our earthly parents, Lord, our mother, my Jesus, Lord, with all that we have. And may, Lord, we bless their lives and we bless their hearts with, Lord, the way that we live and the way we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless uh, Mr. Stephen Maffey with this beautiful message. Únicamente quiero dejar un mensaje a la Iglesia de Sion, leyendo en Efesios capítulo 1, para que nosotros acordemos el lugar tan especial que tiene la Iglesia. Efesios 1, versículos del 15 al 23, que dice, Por esta causa también yo, habiendo oído de vuestra fe en el Señor Jesús, y de vuestro amor para con todos los santos, no ceso de dar gracias por nosotros, haciendo memoria de vosotros en mis oraciones, para que el Dios de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, el Padre de Gloria, os dé espíritu de sabiduría y de revelación del conocimiento de Él, alumbrando los ojos de vuestro entendimiento para que sepáis cuál es la esperanza a que Él os ha llamado y cuál es la riqueza de la gloria de su herencia en los santos. Y cuál es su preeminente grandeza, su poder para con nosotros, los que creemos según la operación del poder de su fuerza, la cual operó en Cristo, o resucitándolo de los muertos y sentándolo a su diestra en lugares celestiales. Fíjense lo que dice aquí, iglesia. Sobre todo principado y autoridad, poder y señorío, y sobre todo nombre que se nombra, no solo en este siglo, sino también en el venidero, y sometió todas las cosas bajo sus pies, y lo dio por cabeza sobre todas las cosas a la iglesia, la cual es su cuerpo, la plenitud de aquel que es, que todo lo llena en todo. En otras palabras, la iglesia del Señor, nosotros tenemos autoridad sobre toda autoridad, maligna hermanos la iglesia del señor nosotros ya somos victoriosos ya hemos vencido y tenemos que seguir adelante con la cabeza levantada alabando glorificando a dios dándole gracias hermanos por el poder que dios ha puesto en nuestras manos sigamos orando sigamos ayunando les suplico que en esta en esta semana usted Tome un día para ayunar y orar por la iglesia, por su familia. Aleluya, que se junte con sus hijos. Tenga un altar familiar, ora por ellos. Padre, tome a sus hijos. Madre, tome a sus hijos, ora por ellos. Dele la bendición a través del nombre de Jesucristo. Y hermanos, juntos, pensando igualmente, venceremos. También quiero agradecer a toda la iglesia que ha estado dando sus diemos ofrendas, síganlo haciendo a través, hermanos, ¿verdad?, del Venmo, a través del, de los sobres. Y si alguno de ustedes necesita un sobre, hermanos, o se necesita entregar los diezmos, me llaman o llaman a algún ministro, hermanos, y estaremos listos para recoger sus diezmos. Vamos a orar siendo despedidos con esta oración. Señor Padre Santísimo, Jehová de los ejércitos, gracias por este culto. Gracias por tu mensaje de la palabra de Dios, sana a todos los enfermos, aleluya, te pedimos Señor que tú seas el que en esta semana, cada hora, cada momento, cada instante, cada minuto, tú seas con tu iglesia, ayúdanos, bendícenos, protégenos, guárdanos, aleluya, sobre todo que el ángel de Jehová acampe alrededor de nosotros en el nombre de Cristo Jesús Iglesia de Sion Dios les bendiga, Dios les guarde y adelante Amén